Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Andrew Robinson and I am a recovering audiophile. And if this is your first time to my channel, I would just like to say welcome. And if you are a regular around here, a subscriber, welcome back because this is the place where we talk about hi-fi, music, art, and design. And today's video is different because it was influenced very heavily by you guys. I mean, it's no surprise that we do a lot of videos based on your reactions, but this one has been a common thread for over a year, and that is every single time we review anything, amp, preamp, integrated amp, turntable, doesn't matter what we review here on this channel, every time we do it, the comments always come in, you know what you should do? you should buy used or vintage is always a better value or vintage is just better in general. And so this is something that I've resisted for a while, not because I have anything against vintage or used gear. Obviously, from a value standpoint, you can save a lot of money and get some pretty primo uh, products for less. But vintage does have its own drawbacks. And so not everyone is going to want to take that risk. Well, after a year, of you guys saying, you should try vintage, you should try vintage, you should try vintage, Christy and I did it. And several months ago, prior to the uh, stay home order, we purchased a new to us Pioneer SX450 stereo receiver. And it's been a very, very eye-opening experience. And so today we will be reviewing this particular product as well as sharing some tips and tricks on how to bring it into the modern era of 2020 and what you can add to it in order to make it basically new. So let's get into it. The Pioneer SX450 is a stereo AM FM receiver and it was manufactured from 1977 until 1979 and it carried with it at that time a retail price of roughly $200. And Pioneer's own ad campaign said that this is the stereo receiver that you can buy that gives you high-end performance at a mediocre price. They actually use that ver verbiage in their advertising, which I thought was actually really funny and a bit gutsy, something that I don't think you would see in a lot of modern advertising. Anyway, the current market value of this particular piece is anywhere from about $399 to $175, $180. We personally paid $150 for our sample from a local record shop here in Austin that has used gear in the back. And I consider $150 a fairly good price considering the quality and condition that this particular SX450 was in. Uh, yes, there is some general wear and tear. Let's face it, it's from the 70s. It's, uh, it's an older piece, but for the condition that was in and the fact that it had a thorough cleaning and lights replaced, $150 was a fair market value in my opinion. So one spec that I do want to call specific attention to, because I do think that it's relevant to the descriptions I'm going to give here in just a moment. The SX450 is a 15 watt per channel stereo amplifier into eight ohms. It has only 15 measly watts of power. And at first blush, I thought that that meant that the SX450 was only going to play nice with my Klipsch Heresy Mark IVs. And so when we got it home, that was the first system that we connected it to. But lo and behold, for a 15 watt per channel stereo receiver, the SX450 has a good amount of grunt. Not a good amount of grunt, an excellent amount of grunt. And so much so that even when overdriven, and I don't recommend this, but even when overdriven, this thing had the requisite oomph to power something like the Polk Legend L800, which, as you know, if you watch that review, and I'll link to it in the description below, we had some amplifiers in this house that did not work with this loudspeaker, and yet this mid to late 70s Pioneer receiver powered them nicely. Couldn't drive them to concert levels or, you know, in excess, but everyday listening, it actually sounded really good, which brings me to the things that I absolutely adore about this particular little receiver. And that is, I was anticipating, I was anticipating a sound quality from this particular product that was overly romanticized and very, very well fuzzy. But that being said, 
this is not a cloudy, fuzzy, old, dusty receiver. It sounds incredibly clear, very clear, to the point where I think some of the clarity rivals that of modern components. And our particular piece has not been upgraded. It has not been given one of these kind of mods that you may see on the internet. It's merely been cleaned and light bulbs replaced. So the sound that we are experiencing is from the original parts from 1977 or 78 or 79. And as a result, yes, the mid-range has that kind of throwback era sound. And that is to say that I do think that if I were to measure the frequency curve of this piece today, it may have a little bit of an upside down frowny face sort of curve. And that is where there is some accentuation in the mid bass and mid range. It's not bad. It's not overly colored, but it is nice. It's pleasing to listen to a little bit of a rolled off bass. There is bass present. It's very firm, very taut and plays deep. It just lacks a little bit of that control and finesse that you may find with other amplifier topologies, other amplifiers with more power, or just other amplifiers that are newer. Nevertheless, bass is present and it is good and it always does sound right and appropriate given whatever variety of source material you want to use. The high frequencies subsequently are a little bit rolled off, but again, very smooth. Where this amplifier really shows its age is in the extremes. That is to say that modern amplifiers, newer modern amplifier topologies, have a little bit better bass control. They can ring a, just a little bit more detail from that, those low frequencies, and as a result, you get more detail, a little bit more texture, and likely a little bit more speed. The same is true for the high frequencies. There are modern amplifiers that are a little bit more airy, a little bit more extended, and that have that just the, that little bit more of detail. But looking at it in a much more broad strokes viewpoint, taking more of an aerial viewpoint, top-down viewpoint of the SX450, everything about its performance is incredibly balanced and very, very nice to listen to. In fact, it it's one of our favorite amplifiers that we have in-house, and it did not take long for us to fall in love with it. And I don't know if that is akin to all vintage receivers, but at least with the SX450 here, it just, it sounds right. I know it doesn't sound perfect, and I know it's not perfect, but it still sounds right. Now, in terms of like soundstage and other little traits that audiophiles do like to sink their teeth into, I'm not going to lie. The soundstage that exists from this particular unit, again, I don't know if this is for all of the SX450s, and, but given the age of our unit, our unit, the soundstage is very nice and very nicely appointed, but largely exists or the focus is between the speakers. Center imaging is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. If you like vocalists, this is a worthwhile vintage piece to consider because vocals do stand out. They are very harmonically rich and, and natural. But if you're looking for something that sort of defies the logic of your listening room, that is to say that has a soundstage that far out surpasses the boundaries of your speakers themselves, it's not really this, this you're not really going to find it in this particular piece. Yes, there is some soundstage width that does extend probably to right the outer edges of the speakers themselves, and depth is good, not great, but what happens kind of between your stereo speakers is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal, and I adore the way that vocals sound through the SX450. Dynamics, again, surprising, and if you have more efficient loudspeakers, obviously the 15 watts per channel does go further. But again, for 15 watts, it's shocking how well this particular unit works with more difficult to drive loudspeakers. But again, give them something like Klipsch Heresy Mark IVs or even something like JBL L100s, and you really can take advantage of the power it has on tap, and it, it, it works. It works, and it works surprisingly well. Now, one of the big selling points of the SX450 back in the 70s was the AM-FM tuner. And admittedly, I'm not a radio fanatic or a tuner fanatic. This is not a feature that I have used in forever. But in today's world, while we're all kind of sheltering in place, 
Christie brought up a very good point shortly after purchasing this piece, and that maybe it's not a bad idea to have something in the house that can get a radio signal in the event that, say, the internet goes down and you need to get news. And I realized that we actually didn't have anything in this house that got a radio signal. So we tested the tuner on this thing and it sounds bloody brilliant. Admittedly, I don't have a wealth of knowledge when it comes to tuners, but from what I was hearing, it was very, very clear. And I loved the features that help you to narrow in and lock in a station that are present on this stereo receiver and that I've since learned about and noticed on other stereo receivers. So it's not unique to the SX450. Needless to say, if you like listening to the radio, I personally tuned in to NPR on several occasions. Uh, this is a great piece to do that. And from an emergency broadcasting standpoint, it may not be a bad piece to have around if things get more dicey and you need to have information at your fingertips. Uh, one of the things that I was concerned about when we bought this piece and why we chose the 450 over another used uh, Harman Kardon uh, stereo receiver that was at Breakaway was that this one had an auxiliary input. Yes, it has a built-in phono preamp, and I'm going to talk about that in just one second, but it has an auxiliary input as well as a tape in and out. Technically, it has three inputs where the Harman only had two, and I thought that extra input, that auxiliary input, was going to be important. Now, I know that having only three inputs does not sound like a lot, given that a lot of modern components nowadays have dozens of inputs, but believe it or not, you can get away with three. And when we get to the end of this video and I talk to you about ways to modernize it, there are ways to add more inputs to this, more functional modern inputs to this very, very easily. Speaking of inputs, the phono preamp, the built-in moving magnet phono preamp inside the SX450 is awesome. It just is. And it is on par, if not better than many of the budget standalone phono preamps that we have in-house right now. So if you have a turntable and you're considering a unit like the SX450 and it has a built-in phono preamp like this one does, don't feel like you need to rush out and get an outboard phono preamp because the one that's in this piece is exceptional. And that was a really, really nice surprise. It really was. So it, it sounds a bit like I'm gushing, and it's, it's hard not to gush about something like the SX450 because who doesn't love spending $150 and getting performance that is vastly more expensive than that? Plus, when you throw in all the retro cool feels that the SX450 gives you, I mean, let's face it, it's just kind of cool. It looks cool. Yes, it's not real wood. No, it's not one of those really nice Morants in a wood case. It's vinyl, it's paper, it's stickers, but it's still from a distance. It looks great. And I love seeing the orange glow of the meters. I love the tactile feel of the knobs, the resistance to both the tone controls and the balance, the tuning knob, that flywheel on it is just, oh my God, it's art. And it just, for, for what it is, especially in the modern era where we do so much over voice or so much over our phones, it's kind of nice to develop a relationship with a piece of AV equipment, especially one that has so much history. Like much like vinyl records, every time I use this piece, I kind of wonder where it's been. What music has played through it? Who else has owned this and how much joy did it bring them? I hope it brought them as much joy as it has been bringing Christy and I, but these are the things that you get when buying secondhand or vintage gear. And I'm, I'm here for it. I absolutely love that about it. So what don't I like? What don't I like? Why, why should you not just drop everything, pause this video, go to eBay and get one for yourself? Well, for starters, it's an entirely manual piece. I know, I just finished talking about how great that was. But if you want modern conveniences like remote control, on the surface without adding anything to it, you don't get that. So you've got to go up. You've got to manually change inputs and you've got to manually change the volume to see fit. Uh, yes, there are a limited amount of inputs when it comes to analog. There are no digital inputs of any kind. So if you're one that's like, well, I need to have this, I need to have that, and I need to be able to plug in all of my modern components, you can't directly do that to this piece. It is analog only, but again, we are gonna talk about the things that you can do and add to this in order to make it current with digital uh, pieces here in just a moment. But nevertheless, it does have but three 
inputs that you can use. And so for some people that may be limiting. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out is for a 15 watt per channel uh, stereo receiver, this thing runs warm, incredibly so, uh, shockingly so, almost to the point where you would think that it's a pure class A or a tube based product. It's not, but it runs very, very warm. And because of its age, and I, I can only speak about our particular unit, I'm not saying that every unit is going to exhibit this trait, but when it is running warm and when you are listening to it for multiple hours on end, it has a bit of your grandmother's house smell to it. I'm just going to say it. It, it, it just, it kind of has an odor. It's not bad. It's very nostalgic. It kind of reminds you of things, but nevertheless, there's a bit of an uh, antique smell, if you will, about these pieces and especially when they get to temperature. Lastly, the only other thing that I feel is important to kind of call out is depending on where you pick up a piece like this, the likelihood is, is you are going to be picking it up as is, in which case, yes, it is insanely affordable or cheap, but if it decides to die on you uh, two weeks into ownership or two months into ownership, you may be stuck with a paperweight and no recourse, and that is one of the drawbacks to vintage anything. We use this in our main system, and our main system is comprised of Klipsch Heresy Mark IV, mainly. We have other speakers here that we test, but we also do a lot of music and movie streaming via our Hisense TV. Well, our Hisense TV does have analog outputs, but they use a mini jack to do it, and I'm not a big fan of those, and so I prefer to use the optical output when HDMI is not an option. And I would encourage you to think about this as a possibility if you want to connect a TV to a piece of vintage gear that obviously doesn't have HDMI or digital inputs, be it optical or coaxial. In order to convert the optical digital signal from the Hisense and make it compatible with the SX450, I purchased an Amtake stereo DAC from Amazon. It cost me $12 and it's about the size of a credit card. And I will link to it in the description below, but I have Velcroed or those command strips, I Velcroed this to the back of my BDI Octave cabinet. So I can run a very simple optical cable from the television to this little cube of a DAC and then take RCA cables out to the auxiliary input of the SX450. And believe it or not, this little $12 DAC does great. Now, if you're like, oh man, there's no way a $12 DAC can sound good. Spoiler alert, it can and you wanna go a little bit more up market, I did use a Shit Audio Modi 3 DAC, which retails for about $120. Again, I will link to that in the description below. Is it a night and day difference over the $12 DAC? Not night and day, maybe not. I think it does largely depend on the source material you are choosing to listen to. I can stream title from the Hisense TV directly just as easily just as easily as I can say a laptop connected to the Modi. And yes, the Modi is marginally better, but it's not night and day. So if you are on a budget, and frankly, if you're potentially considering a $100 vintage receiver or $150 vintage receiver, I have to imagine that budget is a consideration for you. It is possible to get digital inputs to something like an SX450 using a $12 DAC off Amazon. Now, if you want to go all out, you want to get crazy and you want you want to take something like an SX450 completely into the modern era. That is to give it digital inputs, make it Alexa or Google Home compatible, as well as maybe even give it uh, volume uh, capability or remote capability. You can connect something like the Cambridge Audio CXN version 2, which is a network streamer and digital preamp. Now, this has a wealth of digital options and it is a fantastic network streamer as well as DAC. And you, so you can take the analog outs of that type of a piece directly into say the auxiliary inputs on the SX450. Now, obviously this increases the price considerably because the Cambridge audio piece is roughly or a little over a thousand dollars. And I'm not saying that this is something that people should run out and do. It is something that you can do. And it's something that if you like the sound of, say, a piece like the SX450, but you want all of the modern conveniences, products like this make it possible because it gives you Bluetooth, it gives you AirPlay, it gives you voice uh, 
voice control, as well as a wealth of digital inputs, both optical, coaxial, and USB. Needless to say that just because the SX450 came out in an era before digital or modern conveniences doesn't mean that it can't be brought up to spec for 2020 and play nice with all of our latest and newest technologies. So that's it. That is my review of Pioneer's SX450 stereo receiver from 1977. What did you guys think? Am I did I get the appeal right? Did I did I understand what it is that you all see in vintage gear. I think I did because frankly, I love this thing. I absolutely love it. I'm so glad that we purchased it. I'm actually really glad that we purchased it prior to having to shelter in place because it has provided us with hours and hours of music and movie enjoyment. And so I would encourage you if you are looking to build a system on the cheap and maybe you are a budding vinyl enthusiast or just have a small room, this is another fantastic small space solution. We didn't show it in that video because we knew we were going to be doing a dedicated review. Plus, not everyone is going to get this particular piece. There's a wealth, a wealth of used uh, stereo receivers and stereo integrated amplifiers out there. So we didn't want you to think that it was tied only to an SX450 from Pioneer. But this is another fantastic budget and small space solution because you don't have to bring your own phono preamp and it powers most modern speakers very, very nicely. So that's it. That's my review, guys. I thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and be sure to follow me on Instagram on my new profile, Recovering Audiophile, where we show a bunch of behind the scenes stuff. We give you previews as to what you can expect on this channel. And I just, you know, it's just another place you can come hang out with me and Christy and have a good time. So anyway, that's it for this review, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, the only person that has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. I mean, you like it, right? You like the, the piece? It's one of your favorites so far. Are you talking about the... Yeah, the Pioneer. You like it. I'm the one that picked it out. Did you pick it out? Yeah. I'm the one that was pushing to get it. No, I know you were pushing to get a piece, but... Yes, I also picked it out. That was my selection. It reminded me of my youth. Okay. So. So you're into it. You 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 think that the sound quality is. What I'm saying is, the viewer should be thanking me <laughs> for this video. <laughs> okay. They need to respect my authority. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> Can you say I'm weird? <laughs> I don't even know what accent that was. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's Cartman from... Oh, I know. I know. I get the reference. I get the reference. I've just never heard it murdered. <laughs> Watch your mouth. Watch my mouth. Oh, so you, you think it's... You th Put some respect on my name. Yeah. <laughs>